my guest Brian Marshall. He likes to call Apple the best technology company on the planet. And now he's going a step further. He's raising his price target on the shares. Brian Marshall is with Broadpoint Amtech, and he joins us from San Francisco. Brian, good to have you with us. Thanks, Pim. All right, Brian. So before we get to the $260, at $60 price target for Apple shares? Correct. Yeah, yeah up from okay. 235 All right. Before we get to the details of that price target, tell me how is it that you are 30% higher than the street <laughs> when it comes to total iPhones in the world? You're talking about, what, 11.3 million? How do you get to so many? Yes. Well, that's obviously a pretty good number. Uh, we expect that the international segment is actually going to double sequentially to 8.8 .8 million units. That's, in fact, where the street consensus is for total. So we expect about 2.5 million units from AT&T in the U.S. That's down about 20 percent sequentially in line with normal seasonal trends. So that's pretty much how we get to our 11.3 million units. All right. Now, in getting to the 11.3 million units, you then monetize that by making some interesting connections having to do with the prepaid business and the per capita income of various countries around the world. Explain this, this research. True. Yeah, there's a, a pretty strong correlation, or R squared, if you will, of about 0.8 percent, which, or I'm sorry, 0.8, which is very highly correlated between a country's GDP, or I'm sorry, a country's uh, gross, uh, or a country's uh, per capita income uh, relative to that country's mix of postpaid subscribers relative to prepaid. And so, uh, you know, simply speaking, the iPhone's typically going to do better in a developed country with higher uh, rates of income as opposed to, say, uh, emerging countries with, uh, with lower income. And so, you know, typically, you know, people that can afford the iPhone will purchase the iPhone, basically. All right. And the idea being that, you know, prepaid business is much more profitable for everybody, right? I mean, this is a higher margin business than the postpaid. Well, I actually think that the postpaid might be a little bit more attractive because you're, you're locking in your, your subscriber base. And so when you purchase a prepaid card, which, you know, Apple's not really going after at the end of the day, you're basically buying minutes. You know, you know what, what you want to eat is what you're going to buy relative to the postpaid market where you're entering into a long-term contract, you know, typically 24 to 36 months. And so you know, I think that's really what, uh, what the iPhone is targeting uh, with its international carriers is that postpaid market. So that's what we've chosen to focus on. In our analysis right, I beg your pardon. When I, when I meant when I meant prepaid, I meant that you would be signing up for a contract. That you know, getting those contract subscribers is much more lucrative to the network carriers. And you say that right now the yes. penetration rate internationally is like less than one percent for the iPhone. Yeah, you know, that was a pretty surprising um, uh, sort of summary of our analysis today. And so while in the U.S. We estimate that the iPhone is roughly five percent penetrated of AT&T's postpaid base. Uh, you know, based upon the 90 countries the iPhone is in today, and by our calculations, well over 140 international carriers, uh, the penetration from an international perspective of the service available market or SAM of the total postpaid market that Apple's uh, current international carriers service today, it's less than one percent. So. Obviously, we've got, uh, we're just scratching the surface in terms of the international opportunity here, and that's what I think is really going to drive Apple shares over the next 12 months, is watching the international uptake of the iPhone. All right, so let's talk about Apple shares, because you say this is a company that could earn $11.75 a share. That would be for the fiscal year 2010, right? So you're going to put a multiple of 2022 on that? Yeah, almost. Calendar year 2010. So their fiscal year ended September, so we're just going out another quarter. So our pro forma calendar year 2010 number is $11.75. I think Apple is the best technology company on the planet today. So I'm willing to pay a 50% premium relative to the S&P 500. So, you know, market multiple today is roughly 15 times. Loosely speaking, 50% premium to that is about 22 times. Take that 22 multiple times our uh, numbers for next year, again, $11.75, and that's how we arrive at our target price of $260 a share, roughly 25% upside from current levels. Uh, Brian, uh, what about the ATT exclusivity with the iPhone? If that comes off, is that good for Apple? I think so. Yeah. I mean, clearly the U.S. government doesn't want exclusive contracts. I don't think Apple uh, wants exclusive contracts anymore. Clearly, uh, you know, in countries where we have multiple carriers, that's good for competition. Uh, that's good for unit and sub ads. Uh, and that's obviously good for the Apple model. And so 
Uh, my my uh, uh, understanding of the AT&T contract is that the exclusivity arrangement is over uh, in the June-July timeframe of 2010, uh, at which point we believe that uh, Verizon will, uh, will be um, uh, offering the iPhone. So it's our expectation uh, for the second half of next year.